If you're wondering what song I'm listening to, the better question is, how am I able to hear a song in the first place? You see, all that's coming out of these AirPods are vibrations, yet my brain is able to perceive music and song lyrics. So in this video, I thought we'd break down the auditory pathway and make sense of this together. And in the meantime, I'm gonna return to my vibrations. I still find it fascinating that there aren't actually words coming out of my mouth, even though you think there are, but rather through the help of my vocal cords and other structures, I'm just producing vibrations that are traveling through the air. And through the magic of your ear and your brain, you're able to interpret and make sense of these vibrations as words that you can understand. So I thought we'd start this video by trying to understand sound itself and then how your brain interprets that for meaning. All right, let's start with this. As I said in the introduction, most of us probably listen to music, right? But there aren't actually lyrics coming out of these AirPods or earphones, but rather these are vibrations that are pushing up against what we call air molecules, which then push up against other air molecules, causing what we know as sound waves, right? And these are traveling through the air and they're going to enter your ear. Now, to break down sound waves even more, there's two really important concepts we need to know, frequency and amplitude. So let's break this down together. Let's start with frequency. Now, frequency, well, right up here, frequency helps determine what we know as pitch, right? Pitch can be high ah, and pitch can be low, high and low. And we determine the pitch by peak to peak, right? How close these waves are together. Now here, they're very close together. And this is gonna produce a very high pitch sound. As opposed to something that would be very spread apart, right, these waves are spread apart, this would be considered a very low pitch, right? Something like a trombone. So pitch is determined by the frequency. We also have, as I draw a different wave, amplitude. And amplitude determines how loud a sound is, whether it's very loud or very quiet. And rather than peak to peak, amplitude is determined by the height of the wave. So the higher the wave, the louder it is. So this would be a very loud wave, while this would be a very soft wave, right? Very quiet, you're at a library and you got a whisper. So we'll say quiet. And let's just write amplitude equals loudness, just so we don't forget. All right, frequency is pitch and amplitude is loudness. Now, to understand the ear, we're first gonna break it down into three major parts and each one has a different function. So let's start with the first one. We have our outer ear, we have our, or external, we have our middle ear, and we're gonna break each one down. And lastly, we have our inner ear. Now. All three parts or divisions help us hear the world, but the difference is really with the inner ear because the inner ear is where something really magical happens. This is where vibrations or sound waves convert into electrical signals, right? Everything in your brain needs to make sense of things with electrical signals. In addition, it also helps with balance and posture so I don't fall over. So there's a little distinction of the inner ear. We'll get to that in a moment. All right, let's start with the outer ear. Here are a few major components. The first one is a thing that you can see with a naked eye, you could touch it, a lot of people have this pierced. This we call the pinna, okay? Where's the pinna? It's this structure right here that all of us are holding. And what is the purpose of the pinna? To collect the sound wave, okay? And to funnel the sound wave, okay? To funnel the sound wave into the ear as opposed to going away from the ear. So the pinna collects the sound wave and moves it forward towards the brain. Now, it's gonna pass down this little passageway. Do we know what that's called? This is our, and I'll write it inside, the ear or auditory canal, canal, okay? And the purpose of the auditory canal is to take the sound wave and move it towards the brain for processing. All right, so this is the extent of the outer or external ear, the pinna and our auditory canal. And this is where we enter we call the middle ear. Now there's a few structures with the middle ear. We have our tympanic membrane, which you probably know as the eardrum, and these three really tiny bones called the oscles, all right? Now what is the purpose and what they do? Let's dive into that. All right, here's the first one. The first one is this little drum here called, what do we call that? The tympanic membrane, 
Okay? And I said before, you probably know this as the eardrum. Okay? Where is it? It is right here. And this is when we go from sound waves to brr, vibrations. So the middle ear is when vibrations, mechanical, physical vibrations start to begin. So let's write that in together. This is when we start to see vibrations. Okay? In addition, this is when those vibrations are going to start to amplify. Okay? Now, what do I mean by amplify or intensify? It means that these vibrations have to get stronger and stronger and stronger as they head towards the inner ear because, we'll get to this in a moment, there's a lot of fluid inside the structure. In order to move fluid, you have to have more pressure. Imagine trying to jump up and down in a pool. You need more energy than, let's say, jumping up and down right now. So the middle ear, we have vibrations and we also amplify those vibrations as we head towards the inner ear. We also, as I mentioned before, have these three tiny bones. Do you remember what those are called? The ossicles. All right, these are the three tiny bones. Now, what are these called? This is important. We have the malleus. We got three different names. We have these, and I'll do a little arrow to point to the malleus. We have the incus, okay, which is the middle one. And lastly, do we know what it's called? The stapes. Okay, the stapes is the third one. Now, there are other names you might call this. For example, the malleus we might know as the hammer, right? All abbreviated names. The incus, uh, the anvil, the anvil, and the stapes would be the stirrup. So these are, if you ever hear these names, these are just kind of other names for the hammer than the incus and the stapes. And the reason we call it the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup is because that's what they look like under a microscope. It looks like a hammer, an anvil is what you would drop on somebody in a cartoon, and a stirrup is, you know, what you put your foot in when you ride a horse. So the malleus, the incus, the incus and the stapes, right? This is all the middle ear and helps vibrate and amplify that sound. All right, we now enter the most important part, the inner ear. Now, before we get to hearing, let's talk about the balance structure I was talking about originally. You see these three little loops right here? These we call the semi, semi what? Semi-circular canals, okay? Now, what do these do? Well, just like the cochlea, we'll get to that in a moment, are filled with fluid, as well as these little tiny hair cells, okay, that run all along these tubes. And when this fluid moves, what it's doing is giving back feedback, okay, it's giving feedback to the brain, feedback to the brain about the body's position in space, right? Am I bent over? Am I going forward? Am I going backward? To make sure that my posture is all good, right? It's telling my brain where I am in space. And we call this, this is a specific sense, our vestibular sense our vestibular sense. What is it? Our vestibular sense. And don't get this confused with our kinesthetic sense. That's more of proprioception, like where your arms and legs are. This deals with more, and I'll put this in parentheses, balance and body posture. Okay? So there's the inner ear. First, we have balanced posture, our semicircular canals. All right, let's get back to hearing. This structure right here is where all the magic happens. All right? This is what we call the cochlea. Okay, and my students once raise their hand and say, Coachella? I'm like, no, Coachella is a concert in California. This is the cochlea, don't get that confused, okay? Now, what is the cochlea? Well, the reason this is really important is because, first, let's talk about the shape of it. Uh, it's shaped like a snail, and that's actually why we call it the cochlea. Okay, so it's kind of a snail-like, you know, structure, okay? But also, this is where transduction occurs. All right, what do we know about transduction? We talked about this in other videos. This is where sound, right, converts into electrical signals called action potentials. And this happens in the retina for the eye, and it happens in the cochlea for the ear. So we go from sound to electrical signals. Now, within the cochlea is a lot of fluid, right? And you gotta have that fluid move, which is why the, uh, the tympanic membrane along with the oscals are gonna amplify those vibrations into stronger uh, vibrations to make that fluid move. Now, what I've done here is I actually have a cross section of the cochlea itself, okay? In other words, if you take the cochlea and you cut it in half, this is what we see. Anything stand out to you? Well, within the cochlea are essentially these three chambers, okay? And the most important one is the middle one. What? 
Why is that? Because in the middle is what we have, a, you know, essentially a sound recording organ called the, let's do this together, the organ, do you remember going with this? Organ of corti, okay? This is where all the specialized cells and receptors help convert the uh, vibrations into electrical signals, okay? Now, what are the structures within the organ of corti? Well, there's a few of them. What runs the length of the cochlea, we'll start with the first one, is what we call the basilar or basilar membrane, okay? It's kind of the floor of the cochlea and it runs the entire length, okay? What is the structure called? And by the way, we'll see the structure here. I'll do it as a dotted line, okay? This is what? The basilar, basilar membrane, okay? Write it down here, okay? Now, this membrane, and there's membranes all over, contain a lot of specialized cells on top of it. The most important one being what we call stereocilia. Okay, I'll draw little hair cells above here. Okay, and when this fluid starts to move, right, we go from mechanical movement to fluid movement, starts to move from these vibrations that enter through the oval window, right, malleus inca stapes, the stapes is pushing against this oval window, causes this fluid to vibrate as well. This in turn is gonna cause the basilar membrane to vibrate like a wave. Once that vibrates, that's gonna cause the stereocilia to vibrate and cause what? An action potential, okay? Where's that action potential gonna go? Well, it's gonna travel via the auditory nerve, okay, to the brain for processing. This is a nice way to break down how we hear. Now, this is really important. Not every sound is gonna cause every single hair cell to vibrate it actually depends on the frequency. For example, high frequency sounds are most likely gonna stimulate or encode the cells on the base of the cochlea, okay? So on the outside, right? This is, this is the base, uh, this would be what we call high frequency, okay? So high frequency sounds are gonna be stimulated on the outside. While in the middle, this is called the apex, we're gonna have low frequency sounds that are very deep. So high frequency sounds are gonna stimulate the cells on the outside of the cochlea. Low frequency sounds are gonna stimulate the cells on the inner or apex of the cochlea. That's really important to know. All right, let's move on to our final destination, right? All right, we have our sound waves enter the auditory canal. That's gonna cause the tympanic membrane along the ossicles to start to vibrate. The stirrup or stapes is gonna push up against the oval window to cause fluid vibrations. This is gonna to lead to transduction. Where does it go from there? Let's take a look at this right here. So we have our sound waves, right, traveling. And once the sound waves turn to action potentials, I'll use a different marker, those are going to travel via the ear. They're gonna synapse in the brainstem and travel up to, do we know what the structure is? The thalamus or thalami because we have two of them. I like to consider the thalamus the sensory pit stop, right? All of our senses, except for smell, make a pit stop there, and the thalamus is like, where should we send these signals, right? They decide where everything goes. And this will eventually synapse, as it synapses here, with the auditory, what? The auditory cortex, right? This is where sound is processed. Okay, what is it called? The auditory cortex, okay? which is right here in red, right on the side. Now, do we know what lobe will find the auditory cortex? If you were thinking, make sure I got that X, the temporal lobe, then you are right, our temporal lobe, okay? So this is where sound is received, the pitch, right, the, the amplitude, right, we're understanding the tone, and then your brain is like, have I heard this before? Because now it has to do, it has to connect that information with other memories, right? Here's another view of it as well. Here's a side view, right, lateral view. Our auditory cortex would be, you know, right around here. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna connect with other parts of the brain, say, do I know this song? Right, have I, have I experienced this song before? Right, because we have to make connections and to other things going on as well. All right guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Shout out to one of my students, Jessica Rodriguez, for helping with some of the diagrams behind me. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe. See you next time.